I guess the first thing is, is how are you doing right now? Um, and, and I guess where are you mentally about everything? Uh, you know, it's tough, but I mean, uh, I'm not too, uh, you know, it, it's good and bad. I mean, uh, you know, obviously I love DC and I love, uh, love the guys there, but you know, personally for my career, I think it's, uh, you know, it's probably best I move on and, uh, you know, maybe go somewhere to get more of a chance and more of an opportunity to play and kind of establish myself. You know, it wasn't a, it wasn't too funny year last year with, um, you know, personally, obviously the team did really well and, and I had a blast there with all the guys, but, you know, uh, personally, it was, a, it was a tough year. So, you know, hopefully uh, I go somewhere else and you know, I can get a better shot and, uh, you know, um, you know, really maybe like show what I can do rather than, you know, just sit in the stands. Um, so, like, when did you first find out the news? I, I know for all of us, we kind of heard about it from Isabel around 445. Was this something that you heard about earlier, or did you kind of get the news with us? No, I guess uh, um, it was kind of weird for me because, you know, we, they had said they were going to sign me. It seemed that way that they were going to sign me uh, leading up to it. So I was kind of, um, you know, 27, I was kind of waiting for uh, – you know, waiting for an offer, and then, you know, I see tweets coming in that all the other guys have got them, and I haven't got them until, you know, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and, like, 4.30 rolls around, and uh, my agent calls me, and I'm like, okay, we got an offer or whatever, and then um, they said they're not, not qualifying me, so uh, I don't know, it kind of came out of the blue for me, so it was, uh, yeah, I don't know, I, I didn't talk to anyone from the Caps organization, my agents told me that they were going to send me free agency. Yeah, um, that that was kind of I, I heard from so Barry Trotz was on uh Elliot in the morning, uh and he basically talked about um, you know, part of it he, he kinda headed at was that they really loved you as a player and, and you know, I think I think one of the things where he said was that, you know, the the game is going towards a way where it's it's more and more and more speed and something like that. And they thought that if they didn't have you in like in a in a hundred percent role in the top in the top twelve, basically they wanted to give you a head start so that you could you know find another great opportunity. Um, at least that's how he how he said it. Um, I, I don't know how it works with RFAs, but are you guys allowed to talk to teams now? And and have you had any interest so far? Or uh, you, I, just a, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm pretty. That's all. Uh, I'm pretty sure that. Uh, after that 27th day, there's, there's a window that um, um, teams can start talking to uh, guys can start talking to teams now. So uh, now, I, not, not before I'm an RFA, but uh, now that I'm a free agent, they can start talking to teams and kind of just uh, going over who's interested and you know, matter what, where I might land and such. Okay, that makes sense. What, so in general, why, why do you think things didn't work out? Or, you know, because a lot of people were just like you, really confused. Yeah, you know, it's, you know, playing on such a deep team that's, um, you know, trying to win it every year. You know, there's not much room for, um, not much room for uh, development, I guess, for, uh, I guess a guy like me, I think, there's, you know, they, they want to get the young kids, Willie and Berkey and Guzzi, they want to really develop them. But, you know, for my situation, coming in a bit older than those guys and not maybe, uh, not maybe as high, high prospects as those guys, you know, they, um, you know, they have only so many guys that can develop and, and still try to win at the same time. So, you know, uh, you know, I had a great time of loss, and uh, obviously it didn't work out there. But, um, you know, I don't know. It's just uh, uh, it's tough. You know, I, I, had a, I had a lot of really good friends there and stuff, so it, it's obviously difficult. But uh, I, there's not one thing you can pinpoint that didn't work out. You know, I, I didn't really um, get a shot at a penalty kill or, or, you know, get a shot to really nail down a role. So... Yeah, one That's thing that would have just... one thing that would have cemented your role even more was was just the penalty kill, and it seemed like they never really gave you a shot there. I remember, I think it was even two years ago when you had that crazy set where you played like five games in six nights or seven nights, something like that, bouncing between uh, the AHL and the NHL, and and uh, I was really impressed by what you could do in the PK and 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 how much of a pest you were uh, to opposing teams and how. Um, you know, you you really just like Tom was maybe two years ago, how just drawing penalties and 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 getting people off their game, like it it, it was really really a strong suit for you. 
was there ever something that you could tell they were, I guess, souring on in, in terms of that? Because I always was kind of expecting that this year, and it just never really happened. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what I, I – coming into the uh, you know, I, I want to be the Kelly Kill, and I want to get a chance at that role, but, you know, with, with, with all the older guys we had and, uh, you know, really jumping on Kelly Kill there, too. I guess there, there wasn't too much room to, to give me a shot. So, you know, it, it's hard to um, – you know, we, are, we had a really good power kill out of our top five in the league, I think. So, I mean, it's hard to, um, you know, it's hard to go in and, you know, ask for for ice time when, you know, the power kill is being so successful. But, you know, I think that's one of my, you know, it still is one of my strong points in my game. I was, uh, you know, I was a top power kill in juniors and the minors. So, uh, you know, hopefully wherever, wherever I go next, I can uh, get a chance. Yeah, absolutely. I know. Um, I know you said that on on Twitter. I think yesterday or Tom did that. You guys were hanging out today. Um, how did how did that kind of go? Uh, I was I was getting a lot of texts last night. <laughs> uh, Tom and I work out together every day. Oh, cool. So uh, yeah. Are you so, guys still? Uh, yeah, bow still. So yeah, I see him every day at the gym. So uh, yeah, uh, but uh, yeah, he was. Uh, <laughs> I was getting texts from everyone. I wasn't replying right away from him, so he was like double, triple, quadruple texting me. <laughs> I had to calm himself down. Uh, so, no, it's good. I mean, Tom's been, um, you know, I think that's one of the best things about hockey. Uh, the relationships we've built, and uh, Tom and I have obviously uh, become really close, and he's probably one of my you know, best friends forever. So, it's, uh, you know, it, it, I can take a lot of good things away from Washington, and, and the friendships I built have been uh, one of them. Yeah, absolutely. I, one thing that I was thinking about too was, uh, and, and maybe this will be funny, is that um, there is now the possibility that you and Tom can actually fight in a real game. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> would, would you ever drop the gloves with Tom Wilson? Oh, well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I fought my sons before. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, Let's see. I, one other thing that I never really asked you about, and I'm not even sure anyone really asked you about this, was that, uh, you know, you obviously came to Washington as part of the Field of Forsberg deal, and, you know, obviously the main part of that was probably Martin Era at, at the time uh, to try and get the Caps over the hump in the playoffs uh, two or three years ago. Uh, mm-hmm. And obviously they had an eye in the future with you. Did that ever – put more pressure on you? Was that ever something that was, was like, kind of bothersome uh, at times for you? Because I know that uh, a lot of a lot of Cavs fans have, you know, uh, you know, you, yeah. you first yeah, it, yeah. for, like, 30, 40 goals, um, you know, and, and, and I feel like you you have developed. You know, I think you have developed and, and are continuing to turn into a great player. Um, and that must have been weird, that whole thing. Uh, I mean, it didn't bother me at all. Um, you know, I didn't make the trade. <laughs> I didn't, you know, it, it had nothing to do with me. So, you know, I was just a part of it, and, you know, that's part of the business. Um, so, no, it didn't add any pressure. It didn't, you know, I'm, I'm happy the kids do well. You always want to see players do well. And, uh, you know, it didn't, you know, little things like that don't really bother me. Was it interesting to kind of follow Barry, uh, too, to, to, to Washington? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I had a relationship with him before, and, uh, you know, uh, yeah, I've known Chauncey since he drafted me. So, yeah, it was a uh, nice to know familiar face, I guess, going to my, uh, you know, second camp with him. Now, I, I know uh, Chris kind of talked to you about this, uh, I think, probably in the playoffs. But uh, one of the more interesting things for me was that, um, you know, they ended up signing uh, Mike Richards, who is one of the – one of your – you know, childhood heroes growing up, and um, what was that like for you? And 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 you know, maybe how much did you learn from him this year, just seeing him on the team? And 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 that, you know, the last year has just been really surreal. You know what I mean? Like the Caps have been, you know, won the President's Trophy. Uh, they brought mm-hmm. in so many guys. They have like, uh, you know, they bring in a veteran that's won uh, the Con Smythe, like Justin Williams. Um, but but what was it like to kind of a be around veteran players like that? And then, and then B, just be surrounded by Mike Richards. Was was it almost nerve wracking for you at first? Uh, no, I wouldn't say that. I mean, you know, you get to a point when you're, you're 13 years old, and you know, you kind of look up and eye. He's the best player in the country, and he's playing in your city. And 
but you know, once you get to the you know, same stage, the same same level as him, um, obviously you, uh, you know, obviously I respect Richie a ton and, and just as well, and uh, and you try and really learn uh, learn things from him and uh, you know pick up little things. But uh, uh, Richie and I became pretty close uh, uh, over the year, and you know, he's a great guy and a great teammate. Um, so that was kind of cool, just to you know do that. But you know, it's just funny how hockey works out like that. You know, ten years down the road, we're we're teammates, you know. So, yeah. It's- it's mind blowing. It, it really is. Cause, and then a lot of the guys that you see in the draft, you know, it, it, it's it's real to see. You know, we've been following Kuznetsov for you know five six years, uh, and and, and Orlo too, and just to see their transformation uh, into guys. And then you know they're playing with federal. You know, Ovechkin played with Federov, and, and Federov was one of his players growing up. Uh, it, it really is insane, like how that kind of works out. Um, so let's see. I, you know, one thing I, I did want to ask you about, you know, I do have to ask you some humorous things, is that um, I, I think the most notable thing today uh, was maybe Andre Burakovsky's uh, Instagram photo. <laughs> what, what, I didn't see it. Is it a tweet? <laughs> oh, the, the boxing one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, that was pretty funny. I mean, he's such a good kid, and, um, you know, obviously Tom, and I took him in for <laughs> as a roommate, and – you know, we have like he's a great kid, and he's learned a lot over the past years. He's really grown up, and you know, uh, kind of like him like a little brother. And you know, he's a uh, he's gonna be another one. He's gonna be a good friend for a long time. And you know, it's, it, it's nice to see a kid like that uh, really improve uh, the last couple of years and, and just grow up and kind of form into a, a, a good young man. And uh, you know, but you know, it's just fine. Me, we we still like to give him a hard time, you know, just for fun. <laughs> Well, I mean, it looks like you guys turned him into a stone cold killer. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe from all the wrestling in the apartment, he, he figured maybe I'm out. Him, him and Willie be moving in together. He's, like, he's gonna have to toughen up. <laughs> I, I remember during the playoffs. Um, I think it was when when Orlov or, or something happened when Orlov got like checked head first on the boards and and. Or maybe it was another game, but but Burke Hosky grabbed Radko Gudis from behind, and he had malice in his eyes. I mean, what have you like? Seriously, what have you done to that poor kid? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, you know, when I always had two brothers growing up, so when uh, you know when you're the smallest kid or the youngest kid, you, you got to tough it up pretty quick. So me and uh, Burke is not going to be scoring many goals, but he's going to turn him into a fighter. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that would be the greatest thing ever. Um, you know, it, it was, and that was that whole thing was a great. Like, how did you guys end up rooming together? Like, how did he kind of end up with you guys? Was it Tom's prior relationship with them uh, in development camp? Uh, no, I mean, kind of, you know, Berkey, we obviously knew him, and then he was in the hotel because he was kind of up and down that first year. And Hershey and stuff, and hadn't been told to get a place yet. So I think by the time we got told to get a place, it was, um, you know, it was pretty late in the year. So it was like four months left in the season or something like that. So, you know, it's hard to get a lease like that. And, you know, uh, we didn't think he'd, uh, we figured we, he'd be better off living with us. And, uh, you know, I've lived in my, my own for five years now. We least had a couple of years. Or that was his first year, too. We pretty much sure came lives along the summers and stuff. So uh, we figured we'd just take one of our wings, you know, um, one thing with Berkey, he, he, he's always a hoot to have around. Like he's always, he's constantly going and you know chirping us and stuff. So it, it was uh, it was a really good dynamic. Tom gets boring sometimes, so he's always just add, add to the mix a bit. <laughs> but you think he like it, it's hard for me to believe that he's boring. No, yeah, I was just kidding. <laughs> yeah, no, he's definitely not. <laughs> and it's definitely fire. I thought like uh. Definitely the oldest brother. Those two were just going at it costly. Berkey was always just trying to poke the bear with Tom, and it was pretty funny. <laughs> what, what was, you know, something that you can share that Tom won't be mad at you about later? What is kind of like the craziest thing that has happened in your apartment? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I think that the funniest part, probably when Tom and I got, like, really, really, really close is when we first started living together. Like, we didn't have cable for, like, a month. We just, I don't know, we, uh, I don't, I don't know what the reason was. We couldn't get a guy in, or we just were, were lazy or on the road or something. <laughs> so Tom and I would play ping pong for like two hours a night. We'd make dinner, and then we just have these epic games of ping pong that lasted like two hours. Then 
one guy would win like a best of 13 series and then you know it just never it'd be like 5-5 five, five or 6-6 six, six, and then you know one guy would win it'd be like last game and then that guy would lose and be like no one more game one more game so I think that was uh, that was a pretty funny experience we had and you know it was kind of nice I had the TV just sitting on the couch where really uh, giving it on the ping pong table <laughs> That, that kind of reminds me of college when uh, I would play Madden against my friends, and I'd get, like, so fucking into it that uh, if <laughs> if I lost or, like, I threw an interception at the end, I would, like, chuck my controller <laughs> against the wall and be like, what the hell, man? <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. I got pretty heated, too, but, I mean, you know, Tom and I are both competitors, but, you know, at the end of the day, it was, it was a lot of fun, but, you know, with guys that – hate to lose so much it was uh it got pretty heated but that was a blast and that Berkey came to the mix and and he's got that Swedish touch on the ping pong table so it was pretty good I think I always beat Berkey and Berkey beat Tom and Tom beat me it was, it was a nice triangle we had going so no one was really the best it was uh it was a lot of fun I'm gonna need to ask you a follow-up question on that what is the Swedish touch I uh, you know he's just skilled like he's you know Tom's Tom's all power. He just tries to smash the ball in as hard as he can. Berkey's doing all the spin, and I just play straight defense and let them make the mistakes. <laughs> oh, my God. This is great. Um, that, that, that is really funny. Um, so, like, when, when Andre moved out, was that just because um, he was, like, sick of you guys? <laughs> or what, uh, what happened there? I, I think uh, – I think uh, – you know, at one point, they wanted to, they wanted to live on his own and kind of grow up and uh, take a step forward uh, as a man and, and kind of just learn how to do his own bills and, and learn to uh, cook his own food and stuff. And so I think that was kind of it. And then uh, you know he had his um, one thing too, he had his parents coming over. You know his dad comes over quite a bit to check on him and you know and be with him and stuff. It, it, it's all like Tom and I's family where you know they're an hour further away. Um, you know, his dad would come over for, you know, maybe a few weeks at a time. So just for him having that extra room there, his dad could stay. It saved a lot of money, and, you know, it's nice for his dad not to be stuck in a hotel the whole time. That that makes a bunch of sense. I mean, granted, I still can't really cook for myself or do bills, so I completely yeah. understand. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know. So uh, one thing I wanted to tell you, uh, too, was that uh, on our MB, you know, for whatever reason, a lot of people read us, and uh, a lot of times we get a, a good kind of look at, at who's really popular among players. And so this year, when we wrote about uh, you or Tom or whatever your escapades were, or just you or just Tom, um, we were noticing that you guys were routinely getting more hits uh, than anything we did on Alex Ovechkin. <laughs> yeah, it's, we're more fun, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's uh, enough news about him. <laughs> yeah, I guess everybody's just sick of Ovechkin, I guess, or something. But but yeah. I found that really weird. But but I also found that, you know, I, I think what you guys do um, in terms of, of how you handle fans on how, like, you kind of open up your world to fans, but not 100%. It's, it's, but, it's, you know, you, you kind of really let people get an inside look into what you guys do. And, you know, the news yesterday was, was devastating. I mean, just everywhere. Wherever we posted stuff, there was just people everywhere just, just so upset. And I think that's why I really appreciate you talking to me so much is because, you know, some people might, might may not think this is the biggest deal, but for, for most Cavs fans, like, I, I know a lot of people are just just really heartbroken about it. So I really appreciate your time. And, but, like, the one thing I wanted to ask was that, you know, do you have anything to say to, like, the Cavs fans that have been – been with been with you, you know, for the last few years. I know that, like, you've gotten ketchup cookies. Uh, I mean, I see your yeah. Instagram page. Like, people are all over it, you know, every minute of the day. Um, you know, the Caps Rumi's things blew up. You guys are selling shirts out the Wahoo. You, you know, like, do you have anything to say to them? Like, because I, I know this was a really special bond, and, and anything I can do to, to, you know, bring that message across is, is, is what I want to do. Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, you know, for, you know, a guy who doesn't score the most goals or, you know, get the most nice time, I mean, um, I think the the, cat, the the fans in Washington, uh, you know, were, were so good to me. And, uh, you know, it, it was pretty cool to be, uh, uh, you know, so uh, so well-liked, I guess, <laughs> not being cocky or 
uh, you know, just had a, such a good relationship with the fans, and uh, you know, we had a lot of fun with it, and uh, you know, maybe some guys with uh, you know families and stuff, you know, they didn't have much time or to goof around and stuff, but you know, for Tom and I and Andre, it, it was uh, it, it, we have a lot of fun with it, and uh, mixing it up with uh, the fans and, and kind of getting to know them a little bit. I mean, we had you know people fans that to know pretty well over the years. And it's cool to have a relationship with them, and uh, you know, kind of get to know who your your supporters are. And you know, that was that was pretty special. Um, pretty special to me. Uh, you know, to, to the fans have uh, you know always had my back, and uh, you know, I, every time I wasn't playing, I gave what ten tweets, free lado, or you know, something like that. So <laughs> it, it was pretty funny. It, you know, at the end of the world, yeah, you know, obviously Trotsky's not reading that, but you know, it kind of makes you feel a little better. And uh, you know, so that was uh, you know, it was. It was it was big um, uh, this year, especially when uh, you know wasn't uh, wasn't playing too much. What was kind of the the I don't know craziest, but like what was what was the one thing maybe a fan did for you that that you really remember that that really was meaningful for you? Uh, we got a ton of. Co- I mean, we, we used to get gift baskets, gift baskets like crazy. It was uh, cookies and and treats and all sorts of stuff. <laughs> I think like. We made a comment like, "Oh, we can't eat bad food or stuff." So the next day they showed up with like gluten free, nut free, or I don't know what it was, butter free, like serious? everything free, <laughs> cookies. Yeah. So I mean, it was uh, it was uh, pretty, um, you know, it was pretty good. They were, uh, you know, the cap fans were, uh, yeah, definitely really good to me. Yeah, you know, when I was growing up, like for example, um, you know, I was a huge cap fan when they first went to the uh, Stanley Cup Finals. And I remember at my middle school, like, they were playing the Red Wings, and uh, the next day I'd be, like, the only one wearing a Caps jersey to school, and I'd be like, what the hell? You, you know what I mean? Like, the, But, like, over the last 10, 15 years, because of Ovechkin, because of what Bruce Brugger did, what Tross has done, um, you know, the team has become so popular. It, like, it's just insane what little things people do uh, for guys now. It's just, it really blows my mind. Yeah, no, um, you know, and that was one of the things coming from Nashville. You know, I, I had no idea about the fan base in, in Washington, and and that's the same thing when my, my parents come down, my friends come down, anyone who comes down and you know watches a game, they're they're the kind of mind blown. People don't really realize how loud and you know how good our fans are uh, in Washington, and you know that was one thing that was really cool to me to see that, you know, because you know I guess DC is not the most traditional hockey city, but you know to, to see how how um, loud and and how good the fans are was pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. So I guess like moving forward, um uh I wanted to ask a few more things is uh like what do you think the best role would be for you on teams that might be considering you? I know that that B talked about uh last year before he resigned that, you know, the three center uh spot was kinda his dream, which is really sweet in a way that, you know, like the expectations are are really good there, and like, wh- what would you hope a team looks for you? You know, looks in you. Uh, you know, I just want. I think uh, for me, um, uh, I'm you know I'm an emotional player, so you know when I'm playing, um, I understand we have a really we have a deep team in Washington, but you know when I'm only playing six minutes a night, and you know kind of sitting on the bench, not getting really into the game, it kind of takes away from my emotion and. You know, when I'm playing with emotion is when I'm playing at my best. So I think uh, just a just a team is going to give me an opportunity and a chance to play and, you know, prove that, you know, I can play this league and, you know, put up offense and, you know, be a, be more than just, you know, a guy who likes to mix it up and drop big gloves. You know, I truly believe that I, I could be that. Um, so but just, just uh, I just I feel like I need a, an opportunity to, to show what I got. So. See, so hopefully it works out somewhere. I can sign somewhere else, and you know, uh, you know, play the Caps in the finals. Yeah, <laughs> that would that would be great and painful for Caps fans. Yeah. Just like yeah, exactly. uh, just like uh, when the idea of playing, uh, if, the, if you guys would have gotten past the Penguins, you would have played either the Sharks or the Blues with Joe Ward. I know, bro. I know. Yeah, that would have been quite the story. But, you know, that's really the worst part of hockey. <laughs> is that, like sometimes you have to actually, you know, pick favorites, and uh, you know, a lot of a lot of the guys that have come through town the last five, ten years have just been, you know, great dudes. You know, like Wardo and and Brower. Yeah, I mean, 
Um, I think that's one of the best things they do in Washington. They pick, uh, you know, they do the research on quality people. And, you know, uh, the last two years, um, you know, there's not one teammate that I just liked or was a, a dick or, you know, who, who didn't really fit in with the team. And I think that goes a long way when you're, you're trying to build a championship contender. Yeah, absolutely. You know, one thing, too, I wanted to ask was, like, um, since you're so close to him, you know, Tom was kind of skating uh, on the – I think it was the third line mostly this year. Um, what kind of role do you think he can grow into? You know, because uh, you know, we're both probably very familiar with his work in Plymouth and OHL, and, and, and there was a scoring touch there. There was, like, you know, what are kind of his expectations? What do you think he can grow into, just seeing him every day? I mean, I, I thought Tom was really good on the third line. Uh, you know, I think we were playing our best hockey probably when, when that line was together and we were all balanced and, it was, uh, it was good. I don't think we lost too many games there. I think that's when uh, when he was on that line. We were on a, a real streak. Um, but, I mean, the thing is, you know, uh, with Tom, you know, it, whatever line he's on, whatever line he's playing against, doesn't want to play against them, you know. So, so if he's playing on the first line and he's matching up against their first line, you know, maybe it's not putting up the points. But, you know, I think that, you know, their other centermen, their top players are, you know, they're, they're playing a little – they're second guessing themselves a lot too. So I mean, I think that's one thing you gotta look at when, um, you know, when you see Tom, he might not put up a million points, but you know, he, he definitely equalizes the field. And uh, with the depth on, on Washington, I think, um, you know, that that probably works to, to our advantage, or not our used to be our <laughs> to Washington's advantage. One one thing too is like, did from what you saw, do you feel like? Um, towards the end of the season, maybe that – Elliot Friedman did that one report where he said that – I don't know if, like, the NHL officials or somebody reached out to him before uh, at, at the beginning of the season about stuff. Like, did it seem like officials were maybe paying way more attention to him? Because I remember his penalty differential, um, basically the, the penalties he generated and, and the penalties he took, like, uh, two seasons ago – uh, I think he was one of the best in the league, and then this year he was in the negative, and it didn't really seem like much changed on his end. Yeah, you know, I mean, anytime you're you play as aggressive as Willie, you know, sometimes you're gonna get a call, sometimes not. But I did think at one point, you know, the rest were kind of, you know, picking on him a bit, and you know, I mean, tough once you I've been there before. Once you get that reputation, you know, you're kind of uh, it's like anything, you know, it's if you. Any line of work, I guess. If you kind of have a reputation of of starting stuff and, and doing stuff, then uh, you know you're never going to get the benefit of the doubt. But you know, I think you know, I think Willie's uh, Willie's really mature about it. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't go after the refs too hard. He tries to kind of calm down, explain it for, for a young kid that has that uh, that poise and you know, just kind of not lose his mind and you know, really just kind of talk through it. I think that helped out a bit and. Uh, you know, I've definitely gone back on the table with the refs. Do you think that um, you, you have a big body too? Is that do you think also that I always thought about it as, as like you know, if guys are bigger, even if they're hitting harder, officials because the game is so fast now, um, the, the officials are just more mindful of, of, of things like that. You know what I mean? Like because I know a lot of times there's there's opportunities where Tom can light up a guy. Um, maybe when he's coming around the net certain times. And I see, I see him hold up an awful lot. Is, is that kind of like one of the things as enforcers and guys who, who try to create energy for your team where um, you have to be really careful about that stuff, even if it's going to be 100% clean? If you injure a guy, you never know how the call is going to go. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, that's the thing. I mean, say what you want or people have different opinions, but – you know, you're not trying to go out there and hurt guys uh, and, and be vicious, you know. You're supposed to, you know, you'll wear them down and put a good licking on them, but, you know, you're not trying to, you know, end guys' careers or, um, you know, take away from, you know, their their earnings or, or their career, you know. So, you know, there's times where, uh, you know, you, gotta, you can really step into a guy, but at the same time, you know, with, uh, with the, new, the way the new NHL is going, you know, the bigger the collision, the more likely you're going to get the call, so whether it's clean or not. So you got to be kind of mindful of that. And, uh, you know, whether it's clean or not, you know, most of the time your, your team's still going to be down. So. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, um, yeah. I guess 
I, I guess, like, my last two things would be um, uh, I, I kind of just made a note to ask you this was I feel like I should ask you about ketchup, but I'm not exactly sure what. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it was kind of – the joke just kind of just piled out of control. I mean, <laughs> there was so much – there was so much ketchup in the fridge <laughs> because we really didn't use it that much, you know. <laughs> so, I mean, I think we, it was pretty fun when we bought it and stuff. And we figured we'd use it a lot more than, than we did, but uh, we never actually ended up using it that much. So that's why there was so much ketchup there. But, you know, it was a good joke and <laughs> it, was, it was a lot of, lot of fun with it. I mean, that that joke had a remarkable staying power. <laughs> yeah, it was amazing. I mean, you still get it. Like, it was still... You know, getting a bunch of tweets about ketchup <laughs> when I was leaving, you know. It was uh it was fun. Well, I I really, really, really appreciate your time and uh, obviously it's not just me. I think there's like thousands of people who are gonna be uh rooting for you wherever you end up next. And I think we all know that you're gonna have success. And and not just for a year, I think you're gonna be in the league a long time. And uh I, I I, I'm I, I'm again I'm I'm so appreciative for your time, man. So Yeah, no problem. Yeah, I appreciate you guys, you know, all the nice things you said of me over the years, so 